I'm uh, Miranda Squires and I run the Lotus Centre here in St. John's, Newfoundland. I started the Lotus Centre when I returned from India in 2000. The Lotus is a very interesting flower that, that grows, it comes from the muck in the bottom of a pond. And all of us have a past, all of us have things that have happened to us, good, bad, whatever. And it's, it's in our subconscious and it runs us. But when we start to do a practice, a conscious practice, there is this, um, this energy, this urge, this compulsion to move towards the light. So we're all like the lotus flower. Deep down in underneath the mud, but there is this call from the divine calling us to come forth. And we want to come forth and blossom and express the truth of who we are. And this is the beauty that we want to share with each other because when we share who we really are, no matter what we look like, what we felt like, but the sharing itself is the yoga. When I was uh, 16 years old, I was living in Toronto and I was going to an alternative school and I was young and I was also still a very strong deep seeker even at the age of, of 16. So I came across some um, a poster in a bookstore that invited me on this journey and we call it Sham Space. And Sham Space just meaning uh, Sham is the name of my teacher, Swami Sham, and Space meaning the space of liberation, um, the, the formless aspect of our, tr our true self. And so since I um, connected with uh, many other friends in, in Toronto, that's when I made that decision that I was going to go to India. So a couple of years later, I actually made it to India. I was a, a dancer uh, in, here in Newfoundland, and I also uh, trained at, with the Toronto Dance Theatre when I was living in Toronto. So I came back and I, I started dance here in St. John's. And when I went to India, the beautiful part was that um, we were encouraged to share our artistic talents in all kinds of ways. What I've been wanting to do is share with you some of my experiences that I had with my guru living in a spiritual community, Swami Sham, in, uh, in Kulu, uh, Himachal Pradesh and um, we had a community there in India um, where you know it started in the 70s I think it was uh, we we came and I arrived in India in 1983 and um, that's when my deeper spiritual journey began and um, I was young I was 20 um, I was eager to, to learn about um, my own depth of spiritual uh, seeking. Um, I wanted to know who I am. And, um, and I also wanted to be in a community with like minds. And it was a fabulous opportunity for me to grow and be in that type of um, community where we're always talking and exploring and meditating and reading the scriptures, studying the scriptures. Our conversations would always be about um, more of the yogic perspective of how to evolve our consciousness. And what does yoga mean anyway? Yoga is the union of, you know, um, from the, the physical reality that we live in and we are meeting our higher, truer self, which is non-form. But when the two come together, that makes masters. And so this is a journey about me in my youth, um, just sort of like a little baby almost, just trying to express and articulate 
um, what I was understanding from the words that I heard my guru say, from um, the talks and the discussions that I had with my friends, and from the scriptures that I was reading and studying at the time. And so when we go into the deep states of meditation and, um, and the deep understanding when we hear another speak, we, we hear them speak from their essence and not from their personality, not from their ego. So what I'm sharing with you is this um, journey of learning, of growing, of, of developing, evolving. And, um, and I want to share it with you because you also have uh, a past. And everything you've done up to now made you who you are today. And that thing about revering the teacher, well, we want to revere ourself. We want to respect and honor everything that's ever happened to us because it's, it's happening to us for our evolution. And the, the deepest point here is that in the deepest secret is that there's nothing really happening. It's just a big show of your higher true self. And, and it's just an expression of lots of colors and, and shapes and forms. But you, you in your essence is what's shining. Everything else is just in constant change, but you on the essence level never change. And now this is an opportunity as you watch me go through my past and my journey, then you get to uh, think about when you look at another being, they've had a past. They have something precious to offer to the, to the world. Go ahead and ask them a couple of questions and invite them to speak about something that they believed in and that maybe they transformed from that. There is so much that you can do with others around you that will draw them out and bring us into um, a higher state of unity consciousness. There is, in the midst of silence, in the midst of sounds, a voice of purity. There is, in the midst of darkness, in the midst of light, a color of space. There is, in the midst of matter, in the midst of the abstract, a form of formlessness. Very descriptive in her manner. She, uh, <laughs> she actually described the word upside down by standing on her head. <laughs> and of course, <laughs> her student never ever forgot the word upside down again. It just totally opens up into um, a, a vast kind of space. And uh, this is the same kind of feeling I had living in a lighthouse because it has the same kind of uh, sense and feeling that anybody who comes there has that sense of vastness and openness. In our own, our own mental system, which is what we're happen what's happening every day in satsang, uh, I was thinking about like there's two levels or two types of change that can happen within a human being and one is on the surface level like you're on a surface level on the personality level and you can change so many things on that level with the thoughts and actions and everything but what I was really seeing is that there is a fundamental change that's happening and um, that Swamiji's guiding us and that's on the level of not just changing the thoughts and ideas, but basically changing the whole condition of the mind and leading it towards um, the fulfillment very much identified with. And I was appreciating how much Swamiji is for the soul, for the being, and um, for the God consciousness within, within a being. And uh, he was speaking that the whole society has, is um, impressing upon Heather, all of us, I guess, that we should be something. We should grow into something or uh, whenever we are well enough, then we should go back into the work situation. And um, I was thinking very much about how Swamiji has created a situation for um, the aware beings uh, of the world where we are well enough, but we are well enough to venture into 
which what is the the deepest and the, the highest work and um, I was thinking that he's making us all come to a point where uh, what love really is is that we want to love our freedom more than any object, any person, anything, <laughs> any happening, any hope, any expectation. And uh, this is something that's been growing and developing so much in me that uh, I, I feel that I'm coming to a point where freedom is so important and so, uh, I, I, like, I can't live without that freedom state of consciousness that I cannot compromise it in any way. That if I was always the witness or the one who is the experiencer, then it wouldn't be, I wouldn't be caught in the one who is experiencing. And the one who is experiencing, that one is always learning something new and will always be a student to the world. But the experiencer is always the master. And I think that was one of my major uh, revelations when I was away. Normally, when we understand perfection and we say it's all perfect or everything will work out really well, we think, well, things will go according to my idea or my concept. And, um, but Swamiji has a very sort of more or less blown per perception of what that perfection is. It's sort of like when you're looking on the screen and you see all these images and if uh, you identify with the images on the screen, then uh, there's a tendency to think that you hope that the, the events and the situations will turn out according to your idea and they will go um, well. But uh, how I'm understanding now what Swamiji's understanding is that the perfection is as soon as the, the, um, the light going onto the screen is turned off, all you have left is that screen, that pure consciousness. And so when we see that it's that screen behind or that pure space behind all the activities, then um, and we hold that during all the activities, then that sense of per uh, perfection will um, enlighten our whole being, and so everything will always be perfect, no matter whatever happens. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm really, really excited today to uh, welcome uh, each member of my family. I'm, I've been overwhelmed actually in the last few days. It's sort of like when, uh, uh, when it's sort of like when your family comes, you, you get into a whole bubble of your family. <laughs> so, and. Um, I wanted to, for those of you who don't know um, uh, my family, uh, my father, he's Jerry Squires, and uh, he's an artist, and uh, he's quite well known uh, across the country, especially in Newfoundland, and with all of us here. And um, uh, he's been uh, working a lot in the last year just to, just to come here. Well, after tonight's showing, um, I started to feel how fortunate I was to have been brought up in this particular family and how God has allowed me to <laughs> be born into a family of artists. And uh, I know Swamiji has said many times how the artist is the closest uh, being to the yogi and I feel personally that uh, this family of artists as myself I I created dance and my sister Esther was very much into music and uh, my mother Gail into pottery and so it all kind of inspired the soul to mature further into that uh, what I understand now is God consciousness and um, my journey as Jerry was saying this is his spiritual journey and he has displayed it to all of us I feel that uh, I think that every being who is on the spiritual journey needs to express and uh, I feel that 
I express through dance and now um, now that I've come here in the company of Swamiji I feel that uh, my journey has even blossomed more and uh, the expression now is through satsang, through communication of the highest knowledge and um, I see now that uh, the whole family is here and uh, that really delights my heart <laughs> and um, I see now also that uh, my father's journey as he was saying and that all of you have said that his paintings have come to a point of light and light is uh, the symbol of formlessness and so it started with form and now it's matured more and more towards formless and uh, this space here that we're, we have all experienced tonight watching the progression from form to formless I feel that uh, it's kind of a peak experience for all of us and uh, myself and I'm so happy that uh, my father can also experience that with Guru. And he has no sense of uh, duality or anything holding him aside and I was thinking that um, one way to just check to see how much we're able to live that Guru consciousness is um, when we have someone come in front of us, how much can we include that person in ourselves? And if, when that person leaves, um, do we have an effect or a, re a re residual effect of duality? I must say that whenever I dance for Swamiji, my, my whole being expresses more than it's ever expressed in my whole life. And um, I really, really appreciate whenever Swamiji speaks, uh, even after we dance, that uh, it reminds me again and again how the human mind, the tendency of the human mind is to always go out. And dance is an expression of the being. But when Guru speaks, he brings the attention back again. When I asked Swamiji uh, a while back, when I arrived, the day I arrived, I asked, um, is there a way to communicate that knowledge of the space without using words? And um, he said, well, of course, you just shine and you just emanate. What, and the other day, Swamiji said to me that the thing to meditate on is that which is real. And uh, many thoughts have been going around in my head and, and watching where, well, the first thing that I think, okay, in order to create a realness in my system or a reality in my system, is to watch how the thought process goes back towards the source. And um, Swamiji has given many, many names for that process. And one of the names is um, the experiencer. And so when I meditate on the experiencer, many things sort of I think about it. I think, well, OK, well, I'm the experiencer experiencing many things, many situations. And there's a whole kind of, there's still a sense that I still have a chance to experience something because I like the sense of something happening. Earlier about how the child can see God and how a, a grown up doesn't have the ability to see God. He's lost the sight of God and he becomes mind and he just sees the world in front of him. Um, it reminded me of something that Swamiji just uh, gave me a really wonderful trick uh, to help bring the consciousness back to uh, that vision of God like a child has and he said um, wait watch and see and I love that so much because ordinarily, ordinarily um, without the process of meditation a human being is always acting on the thought that is received by him and he believes that the thought is real and therefore he'll go out and act and believe in it and uh, later on he may regret the consequences of his action. Last time I had an interaction with you Swamiji, um, I was expressing my concern about having too much confidence and uh, <laughs> you had said, um, well you have to know from where that confidence is coming from and 
that you have to know the purpose and the, or the purpose of um, all the forms and people and situations that the purpose is to lead to liberation and that if I know that and that um, the purpose is to be free from pain and suffering then I've already understood and the confidence is fine and is perfect and that's the realized state. I have this idea that I'm the space and I brought, I've been thinking about this for all years that I've been meditating that I'm the space but what I saw was that this idea of being the space I attributed to this body and to this mind to the point where uh, that I thought I was limitless. I thought that I was flexible and I had the capacity to adjust and, and adapt to the environment around me and that I could stretch myself and all the qualities of the space I attributed to this form and this personality and I I saw that it was in the wrong place, the wrong identity. I, I realized that experience never really fulfills the ego. And um, when we realize that, then we realize that, that God is the only thing that is happening. And that there is no ego to talk about, really, in that sense. And that uh, when you know that it's just God that's happening, that whatever is happening, so-called in the experience, then uh, the experience can only lead you to that realization that, that there is only God, and that's liberation. I hope you enjoyed watching my spiritual journey in my 17 years living in India with my community and my teacher. So now this is your, your turn to shine and blossom and express and share who you really are. God never closes the door without opening another. God never closes the door without opening another.